It's time for morning manna. Good morning, people of God. Welcome to Waterwell Ministries. My name is Evangelist Leandra Fluker, and this is Morning Manna. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God. It is Wednesday. We are halfway through the week. Praise the Lord. Ooh, if you had a day like I had yesterday, oh, you would be waking up this morning thanking the Lord also. Just thanking the Lord for waking you up. Thanking the Lord that yesterday is over, that you don't have to do yesterday again. <laughs> I know I'm, you know, you said, how can the morning manna lady say this? Well, I'm a person too, just like everybody else. And wow, yesterday, I'm glad it's over. Praise God. But I'm so thankful for today. I'm thankful that we are still in the month of September. God is still revealing things to us. This month of September, it is a month of coming out of darkness and coming into the light, coming out of darkness and confusion and coming into clarity coming into uh, knowledge of who we are. You know, this whole year has been about self-care and it's been about becoming better people and doing the right thing and learning the right way to behave and doing it just day by day. Some people think that, you know, when you accept the Lord into your life, it's just it's just automatic. It's just immediately that all of these other people are just doing so well and yet you're struggling. You are not the only one struggling. You are not the only one that has to take this walk on a daily basis. Every day my mind has to be renewed. Every day I have to keep the Lord in focus because when you get distracted, your mind could just go down any little crazy rabbit hole and we don't have time for that. So anyway, this morning we are coming out of the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 and only one little verse, verse 25. Um, and I just want to say this before we get into the scripture of Exodus chapter 20, verse 25. Um, it's it's funny how the Lord, um, good morning, Sister Nelson. It's funny how we were dedicated to a, a sense of, 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 of change. God has always made that a part of his plan. God has never had a desire for us to stay in the state that we happen to be in. The children of Israel, good morning, Sister Archimedes, the children of Israel were in slavery and God brought them out of slavery physically, but he had to also bring them out mentally. Sometimes you can physically be taken from a situation, that relationship is over, that, that, that bad situation is over, but we're still stuck mentally. And God wants us to get out of that mind frame. Praise God, I had to say that before I got into the scripture. We are in Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to read verse 25 in the King James. And it reads as follows. It says, And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of <clears throat> hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Amen to the word of God. And if thou wilt make me an altar. The sad part about this verse, just starting off, is the fact that the Lord has to not, he's not begging us to make an altar unto him. He's not begging us to keep him in our focus. This week, we've been talking about the fact that God is the light to come into our situation. And the Lord is saying, and if you will focus on me, if you will recognize the things that I've been doing in your life, if if you will just take out time and say, thank you, Jesus. If you will take out time and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for, for being in my life, for, 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 for doing the things that you're doing. A lot of times we forget to thank God. We forget to remember God. The remembrance keeps us focused so that when Satan brings up all this distraction, we're not distracted. You know, just because someone is in your ear going, yeah, 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 doesn't mean you have to pay attention to it. Well, it's easier when you have your focus on the Lord. And this morning, the Lord is saying, if 
That means we have a choice. We don't have to put God first. We don't have to remember who he is. We don't have to uh, put our trust in him. But the alternative is never a good outcome. He says, if thou wilt make me an altar of stone. Now here, the Lord is letting us see that this is a, a relationship that we have with him. He's going to do his part, but he expects us to do our part. And here, um, in the context of what we're reading, uh, the children of Israel have been uh, taken out of uh, captivity. The slavery is over. And the Lord is saying, if you will take out time to remember me in this journey that you're going on, if you will make an altar to me, if you will um, uh, 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 remember now this is a, this is the first time that someone is 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 required to make or is is asked to make an altar. You know, Abraham, he made an altar unto the Lord in in the midst of of his wilderness and when he returned to that area, it was green lush grass and the Lord said as far as your eye can see, you can have this land. See, Abraham made an altar first. He thanked God first just bringing him out of out of of, of that mental captivity of being with his people. You know, his people, they weren't worshiping God. They weren't uh, living a life for the Lord. And the Lord said, I need you to come out from amongst them. And Abraham took his whole little caravan with him, his nephew, his wife, uh, his, all the men that worked with him and their families. And he set out to do God's will. And even though where he was going seemed desert and it seemed deserted and it seemed like it wasn't going to be worth the travel, Abraham was smart enough to know that he needed to remember God. He needed to trust God. And so he made him an altar. Um, and then when they traveled and they circled around and found themselves back in the same place, the land was totally different. Good morning, Sister Latiz. The land looked totally different. Sometimes you can't see what God is doing in your circumstance, but God is saying, if you just praise me, if you just thank me, you're going to... Thank me first. Don't thank me later. You know, people say, thank me later. No, God says, thank me first. Because if you knew what I was doing, if you knew how I'm about to build you up, oh, glory. Okay, I'm calm down. Oh, he says, if thou wilt make me an altar of stone. I'm going to get into this because what I found out about this, oh, glory. Um, if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone. Uh, God is telling uh, the children of Israel, uh, I need you to make me an altar, but I need it to be natural. I need to, this to be um, uh, natural, and I need this to be uh, uh, holy. I don't need this to be man-made or manufactured. I need you to be uh, genuine in this altar that you're building for me. Sister Nelson says, oh, but I want to. And we'll continue. He has been too good to me. Saved, delivered, healed, and restored me. Amen, Sister Nelson. And so what the Lord is telling um, uh, his people then and now is that he needs us to come in a genuine way. He doesn't need you haphazardly saying, yes, Lord. He needs you to come from a place of sincerity when you remember him. You know, when you say, okay, Lord, uh, I trust you. I believe you. I know what you did before. I know what you're capable of doing. So I already know. I already believe that it's happening. He says, uh, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. And he said, if you try to uh, build an altar to me, uh, if you try to uh, re fix, uh, you know, and, and carve out what you think is supposed to happen, carve out what you want to happen, uh, it, it, you're going to pollute it. You're going to mess it up. You're going you're gonna to add too much to it. You're going to stress yourself out. Here, here, let's go to the message translation. Exodus 20 and 25, it says, if you use a chisel on the stone, you'll profane the altar. 
very simple in a message translation. He says, if you use a chisel on the stones, you'll profane the altar. Now, the message doesn't talk about the fact that the Lord is telling them if you make me an altar. But we already got that out of that. And so when we couple that with the message translation of the fact that the Lord is telling us, don't chisel away at the stones. That's just going to profane the altar. Don't try to decorate it. Don't try to make it look pretty and cute. There are things that you've gone through that is not pretty, that is not cute. And everybody might not be able to handle your testimony. Everybody might not be able to handle where you've been and where you're going, but it's not for them. It's for the Lord. When you remember what God has brought you out, it's not a cute testimony. It's not something that looks smooth and, and cookie cutter. It is, it is original to whatever you've gone through. Yes, I might look battered and tattered, but I've been through something and God has brought me out. Here, when um, when I was studying this specific scripture, I, I wanted to look up what he meant by hewn stone and, and, and the other type of stone. And earthen stone is another translation. Um, stones... Um, uh, uh, are different than other types of uh, material that usually gets used, um, you know, to build a house or to make a statue. The stone that the Lord is talking about, it has no preparation. It hasn't been uh, purified. This stone just comes straight from the earth. This stone is jagged on some parts. You know, God's telling him, don't make me a pretty altar. I want you to go get the stone that came right up out of the earth. The, the, the very thing that, uh, that, that, that came out of your situation, you, you use that and, and make this altar with it. Don't, don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about what other people got to say. Look, look, I'm your God and I know what you've been through and I know what really, um, went on. I know that this altar that you're making has a lot of tears added to it. It has a lot of pain and hurt that has been added to it, but just keep on putting it on there because it ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. It's between me and you. See, the Lord knew when he told Abraham to come out of Ur that Abraham was going to end up losing his brother. He was going to end up losing his brother and a lot of friends and, and, and people that, that, that looked at him in, in a certain way. But he, he he had to go and he had to be obedient. And so when he made that altar and he said, Lord, I, I lost a lot along the way. It was that it was that ragged. It was that jagged stone that he had to use to make the altar. Uh, God said, this is not a pretty situation. Oh, glory. St uh, stone altars um, were built in remembrance of an encounter with God. Also, so it might not necessarily be the stone altar might not necessarily only have your pain and your sorrow. It could also have your joy and your laughter and the experience of how God was able to come in. But all in all, it better be in an encounter with God. And if you're sitting here saying, well, I've never had an encounter with God, then that lets me know you don't recognize when God is in, in the midst of your circumstance, you still think you're doing everything. You still think you're in control. You still think that you're the one that's getting you out of this mess, and you're not. Oh, glory. It says that um, not only are stone altars built in remembrance of an encounter with God, but it's also built in memory of God. You know, first Sunday is coming up. And a lot of times, you know, we take communion and we forget when Christ told the disciples in that upper room, he said, do this in remembrance of me. When you take holy communion, it is not just um, uh, a wafer and some juice. You are doing this in remembrance of an encounter that you have had with the Lord. You're doing this because you have an, you have a, a a connection with what Christ did on the cross for you. You don't, you're not just looking at the fact that Jesus died on the cross for you. Like, oh yeah, he died. No, you're thinking about who you are and what you've been brought out of. You know, we, we have to stop all this 
generalizing in the church and let's get to the nitty gritty. Who were you before Jesus saved you? What did you go through? What were the things that used to plague your mind? And now the Lord has delivered you mentally from that. Those are the things we're supposed to remember Christ about. Oh, glory. Anyway. And the one thing about these stones that the Lord is talking about, if you build this out altar, make sure you build it out of hewn stones, is that these stones aren't made by hand. And when I looked at that, um, I thought about when Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise a new one uh, not made with hands. <laughs> you know, God is very repetitive in the word. and he, There's so much in that. But just the, the point I'm making about the fact that the Lord is telling us to build this altar um, with him, in a sense, but take the stones that you didn't make. To, to, to take the stones that 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 came up from the earth, because when you study about stones, the way a stone is um, um, basically brought forth is that um, the earth begins to settle and the gases form and and minerals come together, and then finally uh, a stone is pushed up through the soil. Uh, that's where stones come from. Um, and, you know, whether it's the soil of the ocean and the water kind of lowers or it's the soil of, of the earth. And, and, and I, it was so amazing to me when I was looking at that, that, um, that, that, <laughs> that what God is doing within the earth and uh, underground, uh, is, is, is amazing. You know, trees have roots that go underground first and then up comes the tree. And and that underground roots is what feeds the tree. Well, these stones that God is saying to use that are etched perfectly, that are designed in the way that he needed them to be, uh, he's saying use those stones. And, and, and if you study also uh, stones or earthen, uh, earthen clay, uh, earth and clay is when um, uh, there are, there are certain soils um, that um, aren't near like oceans or water or anything like that, and they're clay. And when they dry, they crack in a way where they look like stones. And so the Lord said, you know, use that for your altar. Sometimes your road gets rocky. You know, sometimes you've gone on a really hard journey and God is saying, use those stones and build this altar. God is, uh, God reminds me of, well, the Native Americans remind me of God. I remember as a child, I learned about the fact that they used the whole part of the buffalo. There was not a piece of the buffalo that they didn't use. Even the fecal matter that came out of the buffalo, they used those chips for to do something. They used every portion of it. And God is saying, even the bad of what you've gone through, you're going to have to put that on the altar. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. You're going to have to put that on the altar and, and give it over to the Lord. The Lord said, I, I, I'll take it. I, I want to see your cracked stone. Don't give me no shiny stone. Don't try to smooth it out and, and, and present it to me. No, no. I want you to come to me just the way you are. You're mad at your mama? Bring it to the Lord. You don't have to tell me or nobody else. People might look at you and say, how are you going to be mad at your mother? It's the truth. You're mad at your daddy? <clears throat> Bring it to the Lord. You're mad at your kids. You're mad at your, you, you, you're letting something disturb you so much. And God is saying, I can deal with the cracks. I can deal with the ragged stones. I just need you to give it to me. I just need you to put it on the altar. I need you to make it into an altar. Sometimes you don't have a fancy altar to put your, your, your stones on. And God is saying, just build them up because you got enough stones that can turn into an altar. Some of y'all playing and pretending that things aren't um, going in a negative way. God is saying, quit, quit having blinders on. See, this is also coming out of darkness and going into light. Is when we are honest with ourselves and we're honest with God because God is waiting on us to be honest as a church, as a family, as a people, and to, and it's time out for playing with God. You know, why in the world will we come to God faking and being phony? And God said, if you 
Put a chisel to one of them stones that you're dealing with. One of those issues that you've had in your life and try to chisel it away and make it look pretty. You're doing nothing but polluting the whole situation. Your altar is false. It's phony and he don't want it. Oh, glory. I don't know what that had. <laughs> what? I don't know if you got anything out of what I just had to say. Ooh, but I know these words come to me first. Yesterday was a humdinger. Ooh, yesterday this man talked to me like I was less than a child. I mean, way less than a child of God. This man spoke to me so ugly. My bosses had to tell me, don't you ever let nobody talk to you like that. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm trying to be a good Christian. I just, I had to just keep my mouth shut. Uh, you know, I couldn't say anything. And he was just so evil and nasty towards me. And I thought, you know what? Thank God for morning manna. Because if I hadn't had morning manna in my life, if I hadn't remembered the word of God, if I hadn't felt the presence of the Holy Spirit rubbing my shoulders, I'm like, no daughter, it's okay. Where would I be? You know, life is ugly sometimes and life has cracks in it. And we have to be honest about that. Oh, glory. I, can, I, I got, come on, everybody. I pray you got something out of this word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you this morning. Oh, I thank you for this timely word, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. I thank you for uncovering any issues that we might be thinking that is too difficult even to bring to you, Lord. That we are too, um, uh, we've come too far that we shouldn't even have these issues. And Lord, we know that you're saying, no, bring it all to me. Make, make it all of, uh, uh, out, put it all out in the open for me. Because, Lord, you are our king, you're our savior, you're our deliverer, you're our father. <laughs> you are our way maker, and we just love you for it, Lord. We thank you that we can rest in you, that we can just exhale, and you are there to, to, to fix it all, to make us new. Lord, we are your special creatures, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for healing in our bodies. Lord, we thank you for mental clarity. Lord, we thank you for giving us um, uh, the strength to just go on another day. Lord, we thank you for financial turnaround. Lord, we thank you for blessing us when we don't deserve it, Lord, because uh, we don't deserve it most of the time, Lord, but we thank you anyway. We thank you, Lord, for make putting us out in front, Lord, uh, even when we want to be in the back. Lord, we thank you for, for delivering our family members that we've been praying for, Lord. We're thanking you now in advance, Lord, for everything that you are doing on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all. This word, I tell you, this word. Praise God. Good morning, Sister Tillman. Hey, how you doing? Love you. All right, you all. As, good morning, Sister Hunt. As the Lord, <laughs> Lord is my witness, this was a word. All right. Uh, as I always say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. And we will what? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now go ahead, take on today. God has already prepared us for whatever may come our way, for whatever shenanigans or whatever blessings, we are prepared because God loves to prepare his people. All right, you all. Lord, say the same. I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.